Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and I uh, hope you're enjoying your holidays, uh, Christmas. Of course, this is Christmas week, coming up to the uh, new year, and of course, 2013 needs to be a better year than 2012, especially the outcome of the election. But I believe that if people have faith, and that means faith in the Most High God, if they move forward with action rather than just uh, wringing their hands, and that means action in terms of their physical health, their financial health, and uh, watch the signs in the seasons. I mean, I expect to see a devaluation of the dollar in the next year by about 30%. Uh, even though gold is temporarily down, they're artificially suppressing it. It's going to take off. You can expect by March or April it'll be starting to really rock as the sovereign debt and treasury bond issues uh, start to cause more trouble. Uh, in terms of health care issues, it's more evident all the time that the, the Obamacare plan is going to fail on a number of fronts. In fact, I just watched a video from Andy Schlafly, our senior attorney for the American Associ- the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons. And Andy, uh, yes, hi, Alexander. Just going to finish on Andy Schlafly. We're going to post up the links to Andy's talk back okay. on October 10th. And we won the um, suit against the uh, Texas State Medical Board. And it has a, because it's in federal court, it has effects right across the country because we've had... Uh, what we call malicious targeting of doctors across the country because of a number of reasons. They're competing with other doctors that are tied to the board, which is very often in Texas. Uh, they're um, touching issues that they don't want touched, uh, such as the issue of vaccines. Okay. Uh, they deal they deal, deal with difficult patients, like chronic pain patients, where uh, if people go and Google my name, they're going to see some very nasty stuff uh, from, the te- from the Colorado Board of Medical Examiners. And what they should understand is that Dr. Deagle was targeted for a number of reasons. I was in court three to four days a week. And in court, I would defend the injured workers, uh, people in very in military, especially military tribunals in, in court, and yeah. federal and state court, and I had uh, independent exams. So I was uh, actually one of the most active independent medical examiners, uh, certified as an uh, expert in evidence, which is considered prima ev- evidence in, in Colorado, uh, almost mm-hmm. more than any other state. And, of course, I got persecuted for it, for standing up for the injured worker. I remember in 1977, 1997, I was the director for the city of Denver for Health, Sozoc Med, and, the, and Bob Stoner came to me, he was a national director, and said, Diggle, you've got to close these 32 cases, and we have some very angry companies because you won't send people back to work until because you say they're unfit for duty. And I said, well, they are, and some of them are actually in medical extremists. Four of them, if I close their cases, they're going to die. He says, is that a problem? And I looked at him like, did I really just hear this? He said, we were thinking about giving you a half-million-dollar bonus, which is, would come up in a few weeks, uh, and uh, giving you a further promotion to be not just director for uh, Denver, but for the entire state. I said, oh, my gosh. He said, now, you've got to close these cases, or, uh, and I'm going to get back to the company directors, or um, we're going to lose business. Now, it's like uh, Scrooge, you know. My business is man. Okay. And if you're, you can't be a part-time dentist, doctor, phys- physician, even a, a checkout clerk in the store when an issue comes up, or when you're t- talking to relatives about any issue like abortion, mm-hmm. pornography, anything. If you don't take a Christian stand, we are not salt and light, and that's the real reason for the season. The season is is to renew us to realize that God did care enough to actually come in incarnate as a little baby. You got the date wrong, but it's actually it's good in a way because it's the date that's the celebration of the birth of the Antichrist. It's the date of the birth of Nimbus or uh, Hieraclius or these other ancient names of the demonic horde that people may or may not want to believe in. But it's Sol Invictus. Old. Yeah, Sol Invictus. So what they need to understand is this is a solid science. It's in fact, the quantum physicists that look at membrane theory and multiverses and so on, they're coming to the conclusion that our world, in a sense, is like a uh, computer program matrix that in fact the only real world is the spirit world of the higher world and that God doesn't reside in the dimensions. He is not creation. He's beyond it. He's actually beyond space and time. He's beyond the idea. Like, so as I said on my show before, having had a near-death experience at eight and a half, I can tell you that where God exists is called the eternal now. There's no past, present, or future. God is omniscient, omnipotent, and always was and will be. And he hasn't changed ever. And he's totally, totally capable. And the thing is, whether it's a geopolitical issue of the fiscal cliff or your health because you're heading toward cancer or heart disease or you're having panic attacks or you're worried about your church or your whatever, the thing is, don't try to figure it out yourself. You've got to get out of the way. I, I say the first dragon, in fact, is your, is your own ego. <clears throat> once you get the ego out of the way, once you get honesty, you can start dealing with problems. And I think if I was to give a dialogue, 
where God would say, now that you're out of the way, I can help you. It's almost like a, uh, a really good rescue um, uh, lifeguard. And when you're struggling and splashing and swinging, trying to punch the lifeguard in the face and then get around behind you and get you by the neck and under the arm so that you can't, uh, you know, drown the guard, they can pull you to shore with their little float and you're alive. But the problem is, you see, we don't realize that we're not just dealing with a personal issue in this culture. So that's why when I see many of the radio hosts, not only in this show, but other networks, they always try to think that there's a <clears throat> political answer, whether it's this party or that party. As Jesus taught, he didn't come to be a political leader. He came to change hearts and people. He came to make new living stones, people that would actually be uh, able to build up the New Jerusalem, which is not a building. It's us. And uh, we're going to have uh, Pastor Dave on. In fact, I'll have him on with you on every, uh, of course, you're on other hours, but uh, on the third hour on every Wednesday, starting on the 9th of January. And um, I think people need to understand, we're going to give a perspective on all the advances to life extension, which Jesus mentioned in the first gospel, the first literally word he gave in the synagogue, which is in Isaiah. You know, that lo, a man die at a hundred, it shall be as the years of a child. Uh, and and in that day, the knowledge of the Most High God will be as the waters of the oceans on, on the, in the whole world. In other words, what we're saying is no one's going to have to say, know the Lord, because if you exist in that day, you won't, you won't even exist unless you know God. Those who don't know God are not going to make it into the next millennium. They're not going to make it into the next world. They're not going to build a house and, and live in it and eat the fruit of the trees that they plant. They're not going to do that. It's just not going to exist. And human beings, you won't see disease like aging and devastation and war. And it won't be like the statue in front of the, uh, with the bent barrel of a gun in front of the United Nations building, where the work of man's hearts, which is always, as it says in the Bible, continuously evil, it will be a transformed heart. As Jesus said, I'll take your hearts of stone and give you hearts of flesh where I'll write my commandments on them. Literally, it'll be part of our DNA. We won't be capable of it, but we'll become so tied to the Spirit of the Most High, uh, it'll be like as we try to shove someone's hand into the fire, we'll feel a flame on our own hand. As we try to conceive something evil, that conception will literally immediately revolt us. So we won't have to have those, quote, commandments. It'll be part of our DNA, our spirit DNA. And... Um, just like Pastor Dave mentioned on the third hour yesterday, uh, <clears throat> that's the difference between reconciliation and salvation. Salvation is walking with God. Reconciliation is what Jesus already did. Sin's gone. It's history. But you don't have any power unless you believe God can do it, whether it's getting out of your physical, financial, or the national issues. You know, When we see people wanting to grab the guns, when we see the New World Order step by step moving toward devastation of the totalitarian state, the solution is to pray for people like Obama. I remember having a vision of Obama. I said, God, show me who this guy Obama is. Because, of course, the elite have spent millions of dollars trying to hide his records and everything. And I saw a little boy, probably about 10, 12 years of age, going to visit his uncle, as he called him, uncle uh, in Hawaii, right, who is the communist, his real father, which he didn't know <coughs> until later. And uh, his uncle sodomized him. So it's not surprising that Mr. Barry Satoro Obama had to literally manufacture a kind of a, a vista of imaginary worlds, including his so-called origins in Kenya, where he doesn't look like any of the relatives. It's not surprising people like Hillary Clinton, who, are very, who is very intelligent but malevolently evil. And, of course, lately what's happening is her health is deteriorating. That's why she's not showing up. It wasn't just a fall. She has problems. What I've heard from my sources is she has Parkinson's disease. That's why she fell. And, of course, they might try to think that they're going to do a fetal tissue transplant to fix it. Well, I was involved reviewing that for the Royal Commission 20 years ago, and it causes the fetal cells to act like a tumor. So, no, you have to seek the most high God if you want real solutions, not evil and the dark side. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and now, uh, Alexander, it's your turn. Um, tell us all about this remarkable um, video you talked about by this researcher, uh, PhD, and also an attorney, who did some work on the alignment of the stars called the, the Morning Star, which literally was a sign in the heavens. Right? 
Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Thank you, Dr. Deagle. You know, now that we're uh, touching on this subject, you know, I am just... Uh, um, I just love to research Christ. You know, ever since I started listening to uh, Dr. Glenn Kimball, uh, may uh, may he be very well up in heaven because he passed away some years ago. Um, you know, I I was transformed. And uh, when I watched this documentary last week, and um, uh, I just sent you the details a moment ago, so you can watch it yourself. Uh, it's called uh, the Star or the Bethlehem Star. And uh, it's just an incredible, incredible, uh, again, another exposition and also prima facie evidence. When we talk about prima facie evidence, we talk about the evidence that nobody can uh, you know, go against. Basically, it's irrefutable. And here we have uh, a lawyer of all things, okay, uh, Mr. Larson, uh, and his complete name, I'll give it to you in a minute, but um, he, it's just a dramatic the way that he he um, he exposes in a documentary that anybody can get at uh, BethlehemStar.net, and uh, it's a great documentary. It's called uh, BethlehemStar.net, right? Yeah, BethlehemStar.net, which proves that the Bethlehem Star, in fact, was um, was a specific alignment, um, uh, none other, and very unique in the sky over Bethlehem at the moment of Christ's birth um, uh, in September of uh, the year uh, three before Christ, which yeah, is very interesting. It was a convergence of the positions in the heavens of Regulus, the large star Regulus, Jupiter, and was Venus, right? Yeah, Jupiter and Venus. What's interesting is that the moon is at the feet of Virgo at the moment, all right? The same as in Revelation 12. And the, the sun... <laughs> is above her head so that that's very interesting in itself uh... you have the same uh... the same alignment uh, uh... with uh... with the crucifixion of christ uh, i'm not going to spoil it for everybody uh... i would recommend you watch it it's also uh... if anybody goes on youtube and you know, researches the star of bethlehem you'll you'll probably find it you will probably find it if not, you can uh, explore the DVD and um, and purchase it. But I think it's very well because this part of that evidence that n people just can just cannot just discredit or just pass off as uh, false. Now, if you want stronger conclusive evidence, anybody can email me, and I can get you the documents from the Library of Congress that we have in our possession. I already translated into Spanish. These are Roman letters from Pontius Pilate and the rest of the gang that were there at the time of the crucifixion. Even Pontius Pilate writes to Tiberius Caesar, uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph Flavius and all, the, all of them are writing here in these letters for the uh, Roman army about their experience with Jesus Christ. So there's no doubt that the man existed, the man uh, was who he said he was, okay, and the way they describe him uh, uh, is just uh, wonderful. I mean, Pontius Pilate, a military leader in his time, uh, governor of Judah, or Judea, uh, describing Jesus Christ as celestial, as uh, angelic in nature, uh, standing out in the crowd, an incredible person just to behold. So one of the best philosophers ever to exist. Uh, so these are independent documents from the Bible, but they give great credence to everything that transpired in the Bible. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's really interesting. Now, it is BethlehemStar.net. I actually opened it up. It's a beautiful uh, web page. Uh, and you can get the full DVD and all the documents there right at BethlehemStar.net. Now, um, I believe we're going to a very, uh, what I call a time of polarization. It says in the book of Revelation, I think in Revelation 22, it says, let those who do good continue to do good and those who do evil continue to do evil. In other words, there's going to be dividing of the sheep and goats. Sheep meaning those who follow God, the shepherd, and goats meaning those who follow their own ego or their globalist uh, desires or the dark side. You know, I tend to agree with that. I mean, Matthew 25 is very clear on that. There is going to be a division of the souls uh, before uh, the coming of the Lord. And what's going to happen here is, the, uh, yeah, we will see the, the battle lines drawn. And we've been drawing the lines for a while now, telling people in email, basically, that you're going to be either on this side or this side. I already took my stance on it. For example, my position on Israel changed this year, thanks to you and thanks to other brothers that corrected me. But they corrected me with evidence. 
You see, I, I change with evidence. So if anybody wants hard-hitting evidence, we got yeah. it. Okay? So what's your position right now on Israel? What, uh, how do you look on it? Because well, I cannot. I yeah, I cannot support uh, a country that is killing innocent children in Gaza. Yeah, it, what we have, what and, we have in Israel, is we have a Sabbatan, Satanistic country with a tiny mustard seed of Torah Jews, a tiny mustard seed, maybe even in only in dozens. Even most of the so-called rabbinic clergy are Sabbatan, or we call Talmudic Jews. Talmudic Judaism is nothing like Old Testament Judaism or the ancient faith of the prophets. And so what we have is a situation where they're either secular agnostic communists, which is why the kibbutzes were formed, or they're <clears throat> Satanistic, and they believe the ability that the rest of the population, including Palestinian Christians and even Jews who converted to Christianity, are soulless dogs. Now the problem is that we have the rider on the horse, or the rider on the beast, is the state of Israel. The rider is this, quote, woman which is Babylon, the great mother of harlots and of abominations of the earth. If you look back to the control, right now the chief place that people are sticking their money is not Switzerland or the Grand Cayman Islands, it's Tel Aviv. Uh, people don't understand what's really going on in the world, that we are moving some of the most advanced weapons on earth to the state of Israel, and uh, they're seriously considering the use of what's called the hammer of Samson, so that they, as surrounding nations, if they try to attack, they'll literally kill billions. And I believe that the current state of Israel is, in a sense, that's why it says that at that time, the blood shall be up to the horse's bridles. I see that the previous prophecies that there would be 7 million dead, which they prophesied before the First World War, and then they prophesied after the Second World War that 7 million died. Well, it wasn't 7 million. It was probably somewhere under 7 million. Who Some people argue 2.5 to 6.5 to million. <clears throat> By the way, most of them died... Not because they were executed, they died of disease and starvation, and they were, because the diseases and starvation spread, in, not only there, but also among the German people. And within the first four or five years after the war, about four and a half to five million Germans and other Central Europeans that were on the side of the Nazis died of starvation because we didn't help them. Um, we, well, even, and, purposely, and we even pur purposely gave over, uh, we even gave over a number of Germans were handed over to uh, the Russians to die in outdoor prisons literally below freezing and get die of hypothermia. That was by the millions. Yeah, we got 50 million in Russia that died uh, just because of that, too. I mean, yeah, nobody talks about the Russian in the textbooks, but yeah. No, right. But they killed a lot of the, the Central European people. They were deceived. Uh, and, of course, part of it is what I call the, uh, how can I say it, deception always comes from cowardice. If they were honest with both the facts, they'd see that the rise of a monster, just like the rise of Obama, who's a monster? All those executive orders. Mm -hmm. When we come back, we'll talk more about this amazing, the star of Bethlehem. Bethlehemstar.net, back in just a moment. Do they show... Welcome back, and um, one of the questions that people have put out is they asked me to write the, and post up the uh, next of the scrolls, the small scrolls. The first of the small scroll prophecy I got back in, er, in early uh, fall of 1998, um, before I even traveled to 42 cities in Israel with the Prophecy Club. And it was a prophecy against America, and of course we went over with Dave the names of the tribes and how they're tied directly into the pathway to God. Well, <clears throat> those stones also are the same as the stones in the breastplate of righteousness, which signifies specific spiritual gifts. And what I see happening is, and this is a very important prophetic, uh, if you want to call it, transition point, on the 21st of December, which is just last Friday, before Christmas, I received a very powerful, and I received it three times, so it's a confirmation, that we went from lineal time to eternal time. Now, people won't see a difference. They'll look out and see the same trees, like I'm looking out and see my palm trees out, my fruit trees out, my patio door window. I can see Pendleton Marine Corps Base over the horizon about three or four miles away. But we're no longer in uh, we're no longer in lineal time. We're moving to a time where everything's being unveiled. It's literally like the time of Daniel. It says, close up and seal the words of this book until the time of the end. When you talk about the star of Bethlehem, when you talk about the whirlpool galaxy where you can see Jesus on the astronomical charts actually being crucified, when you see these things happening, no one's going to be able to say that they don't believe that God has fingerprints all over the universe, right down to our DNA. 
And well, no one's going to be able to say that they're ignorant. So you, you know, now that, that you mentioned DNA, uh, Doctor Deagle, now that you mentioned DNA, I mean. Uh, we've done the research. Uh, Louis Giglio has done some excellent lectures. Anybody can go on YouTube and find it. Just research the word. You're a doctor, okay? Right. I, I got this question for you. What's laminin? Uh, laminin is a specific protein that coats your DNA. Okay. Well, laminin is basically like the rebar uh, inside our cellular structure. It's right. um, it's the basal structure for all of the organs and the the tissue yeah. inside our body. Uh, right, it's like one of the microtubules in the structure that makes you up. What I discovered, and I was shown this basically supernaturally 30 uh, years ago, and I presented it to a panel of biophysicists called Phonon Maser Biophysics, and I'll explain that for people who want me to speak a little more slowly. Phonon are sounds, Maser means they're coherent. They're infrared light in the far and near infrared spectra, they have electromagnetic and uh, electrical properties, and they're what's called infrared bosons, which basically are uh, infrared, if you want to call it, light uh, energy molecule, uh, the energy packets that transition along the phenolic side groups of collagen uh, and the connective tissues of elastin and hyaluronic acid. So what happens is your DNA actually codes for the superstructure and the function of your body and these molecules like laminin, uh, molecules, it, it does it through a very specific molecule called cryptochromes. And cryptochromes actually sense not only magnetism, which is a torsion field, literally the, the structure of space-time, the fifth dimension. It also can detect light, especially things like blue light in mushrooms. It's present in every living thing with uh, magnetite, which is a very important mineral. Without magnetite and cryptochromes, no living thing can actually translate the DNA into the structure or function of the cell. So um, <clears throat> the highest concentration of cryptochrome is in the pineal gland, and it's actually the physical place where the cord of living waters that they talk about the silver cord in the Old Testament connects your soul to your physical body. And the most dangerous attack to it is fluoridated compounds like Prozac, fluoridated water, etc. So fluoridated salts are the most dangerous, and also it was called halide toxins. So that's why our new triodine, which Edgar Casey talked about, is one of the most important things to if you want to call it, detoxify your pineal gland and the soul connection to your physical body. And we use other things to remineralize, like indiomies, which is 49 in the periodic table. So you see there's some science here, and God is unveiling all of this right now. He actually showed me, and I presented this 30 years ago, I came, I've got a new uh, advancement in my theory of what's called phonon maser biophysics, and I presented it last year in Las Vegas on my advanced theory of, of cell structure that only 7% of your DNA codes for the 32,000 proteins. The rest of these molecule structures that actually pick up these scalar frequencies and, and literally build, like computer code, <coughs> hierarchical, what's called frequency-coupled capacitance gene complexes that actually learn how to translate to, to the right concentration of a molecule, the structure of, a, of an organ, like your eyes not going to be the size of a dinner plate or a pea, uh, rebuild the organs and structures, and so what I presented, and I'm going to present part two coming this December in Las Vegas, is God has given me the actual cause of aging. And according to Dr. Ron Klatz, and again, it wasn't just Deagle. I mean, I'm smarter than most, but this is God. And people need to understand, God's unveiling things that he said in Isaiah, uh, that were cataloged in Isaiah, at his first talk in a synagogue. And he's working through his people to release these things. And I believe that lineal time, the time when people need to age, the time when people need to be in want or fear of war, the time when we are terrified of what's going to happen on the sun or near a space object, so those times are over. But man has to come together because judgment's coming on the planet, and those who bind themselves together with their globalist intent, they'll die. They'll die not only a physical death, but a spiritual death. That death is coming. So when people say the soul can't die, they're wrong. The soul is not eternal unless it's fused to the spirit of the Most High God. The soul is not eternal. People think their soul is eternal or it's going to get reincarnated. Not true. No, it's but mortal. <clears throat> yeah, mortal. we are so, mortal. The moment he wants to extinguish your fire, he will. Right, All exactly right. as though when he sent me back from the, from the place of heaven, he said, you are always here with me when I sent you back. So you are now received. And I didn't even understand what it meant. The order of Melchizedek means when you've ascended to heaven and <clears throat> you're sent back like these apostles and prophets, you're no longer a mortal being. <clears throat> you're no longer mortal. So if I die, I'm instantly there because I've never left. 
And so people have to understand when they hear some of the things I say, whether it's scientific or otherwise, I speak sometimes things that I don't even fully understand, but God's given them to me. And uh, they need to understand that God is opening up things as we're in a desperately late stage. We have a sovereign debt crisis that's going to strike between January and April this year. We have a pending war where if they could get their way, they'd start a nuclear war in the Middle East. It'll destroy the world economy and billions of people. We have the environmental danger of coronal mass ejections, and no government is properly hardening their satellite communications or power grid. And in our civilization, if just the power grid goes down, people will become cannibalistic within two weeks. Well, maybe, you when know. I say these things, I work with Special Forces in Delta. God gave me the opportunity to work firsthand as a civilian with these special groups and have Q-level clearance. I, I'm saying things that are so shocking. As I say, I can only tell you about 10% of what I know because people could not handle what I know. They couldn't. They couldn't uh, handle it. So I, I'm not going to abuse people by telling them things because, you know, in, in the midst of all this, my faith gets stronger because I know God is in it. I know I can't do anything. You cannot do a thing. But as soon as you submit to the fact that God is the one arbiter of all knowledge, wisdom, and goodness, that God has not a, got a big fly swatter and a swat man, that he's merciful, that he's going to save our planet from nearer space objects or coronal mass ejections or starvation and war. And we need to pray for these leaders that the demonic horde that, that literally avatar them will not avatar them in 2013, 14, and 15, and 16. And monsters like Obama who were sodomized by his real biological father, and people like Hillary Clinton <clears throat> don't return to run as president in 2016, whose family were satanic, and she herself, from a little girl, and for generations before she was even born, was cursed by her ancestors with sex magic rituals and human sacrifice. And people say, oh no, Dr. Deagle, you're exaggerating. Everywhere you look on Earth, no matter what names they call it, you see the power of the demonic horde, whether you call them archons or demonic horror, or you call all kinds of names through the history of the world, right back to the ancient druids, you have to understand these are different names for the same thing. She's the chief matron of the United States. That's a, that's a, a, a woman mason. She's the chief matron, and that's why she appointed Carrie. Right. Obama uh, let's, didn't let's appoint let's Carrie. Let's Exactly. Look, when I met when I met Bill and Hillary Clinton, <coughs> Bill was the kind of guy you go with a six pack of beer and go fishing. When I met her, I literally was in the presence of the demonic power of darkness so great, it was the greatest evil I've ever physically come in contact with. And in the spirit realm, I didn't see a diminutive five foot three or four woman, well dressed but plain looking with a stone cold face and a hand as cold as if it was a block of ice in a freezer. I saw a fourteen plus foot Draco reptilian monstrosity. That's what I saw. People need to know there are people like us that know the real truth of why our world is such a mess. Scramble people's brain or break down the, the doorway to their cortex. Welcome back. And uh, yeah, I get a little too technical, but let me just put it this way thought literally in the mind. And if you want to call it the scalar thought that literally creates an organ or structure, has substance and has a hierarchical code. In other words, I never published my research in 1982 after I presented to this panel of biophysicists and doctors, because I knew ultimately it would be used for a weapon. And of course, in 1988 to 1994, I took care of the Jenner Crafts Parts Plant, Pratt Whitney, and they had a huge accident in the early 90s, and I discovered that there was an offshore DARPA project as well. Uh, doing directed energy weapons to release peroxisomes and lysosomes, literally a collimated apoptosis weapon that was put on the Abrams tank in the Apache E-10 tank killer. So what people need to understand is God's in control of everybody's life. He's definitely been in, in control of mine, both the good and bad I've done. And he's seen it all from the vantage point of eternity, knowing that ultimately, even in all my failings, God's going to use those to move forward to try to give solutions. Because people basically are not going to hear this anywhere else. They're not. Now, that's why I bring on experts like yourself that are very unique, Alexander, that understand and literally speak to the Most High God because you're a called out one. You're one of the ones that understands at a deeper level the meat and potatoes, the really important stuff, not the milk and cookies of Christianity, but the how the pathway, the way, as the early church was called, to walk with the Most High God. Well, you so, know, there's... Uh, there's a cascade of light that shines down from heaven. You know, I've been on that cascade of light. I've, I've right. been up there. Um, 
I, I was up there in 2005 and it transformed my life. Uh, well, the moment I saw this man with a white long beard sitting on this um, stone uh, chair, and he had a, a breastplate with 12 stones on it. Very beautiful, by the way. Right, yeah. And I saw his fire blue eyes, and I was like, Wow, it's you. Like, I, I remember who you are, right? I was like a little kid, you know, looking at his father. I was like, Dad, you know? And uh, he grabbed me by a hand, took me to the Crystal Cities up in heaven, and took me inside a library. And uh, they, they opened up this box. This wooden box was given to me. And I opened it up, and there was this beautiful white uh, crystal stone. And all the information from that stone entered into me. And then right. I, I was brought back here for a specific reason. So, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> yeah, what, what people have to understand is this is not exclusive. God's not a respecter person. We're not better people than anybody out there listening. We're not. We've done good and evil. But the only thing that makes us different is we're further down the road. We have submitted to the Most High God. We've trusted Him. See, you don't get to know the Bible by reading it. You don't get to know it by quoting scriptures. The highest being that can quote scriptures better than any pastor is Lucifer himself or Satan. Uh, you have to live... And literally trust God and submit to the will of God in order to actually be free. Freedom doesn't come until you realize that the ultimate one who cares for you more than you can even care for yourself, who cares about your civilization, cares about your family, is the Creator God. He's going to find cures for, you know, cancer and aging and economic issues, etc. And all we have to do is submit, and the solutions to God are simple. It's, it's called instant remission. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what what He showed me when before He sent me back when I was eight, which was a long time ago, because I'm going to be. 61, he showed me a place that he called the Hila Archeon, which is the storehouse of all knowledge of everything that was or will be. And he said, you have access to this, but don't go there unless my spirit calls you. And there really is a solution for everything. There's no such thing as anything that has to be discovered. It's always been there. Look, how great is Jesus Christ that he designed even the Whirlpool Galaxy as, a, as well as the rest of the galaxies. But just, I mean, go to Wikipedia and go and look up Whirlpool Galaxy. This is Galaxy M51. And it just says, the Whirlpool Galaxy is an interacting grand design spiral galaxy. Grand design? Excuse me. Grand design means somebody designed it, right? <laughs> okay. Right. Second of all, if you scroll down on Wikipedia, you'll see on the middle right hand, uh, right side of the page, the nucleus of the core, thanks to Hubble Telescope, of the Whirlpool Galaxy. And I'm not going to spoil it for everybody. Just go look at it and look at the caption on the bottom of it. And uh, yeah, I, you, can, you can go to, by the way, the Hubble. I have Hubble on my iPad, too. But you can go to the Hubble pictures of the Whirlpool Galaxy, and it's amazing. Now go to the it's core. I mean, the core is it's just amazing. Now, the laminin thing... It's just incredible because, uh, you know, the way he created and stretched out the heavens will also inside our body. Just lemon in the definition uh, that you gave is very, you know, complex, but it's very simple really to understand. It, it, it says, it's a song in your DNA. It well, it says here the trimeric proteins intersect to form a cross like structure that can bind to other cell membranes. Uh, and it says here, the laminins are a family of glycoproteins that are an integral part of the structural scaffolding in almost every tissue of the organism. Excuse me, that says that laminin is the glue that keeps us together. It's what keeps the human body as is. It keeps the body whole. So if we go to um, one, uh, Colossians, uh, Colossians one fifteen through 20, I'm going to quote here from the Bible. It says, who is, who, meaning he, Jesus, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him we are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him for him. It doesn't say for uh, the universe or for creation. It says by him and for him. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it is pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, the laminate, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things of earth or things in heaven. So there you go. I mean, yeah, in other words, uh, it is the laminin is the result of the song in your DNA. And it's translated by cryptochromes, which are a polymeric form of tryptophan uh, and uh, molybdenum. 
By the way, molybdenum is necessary to be able to tolerate high altitude, and indium. And these are paramagnetic molecules that translate what's called hyperspace archetypes to literally create you. Now, what I tell people, and this is I presented my theory, the academy is that aging, and even we call it continuous recreation. See, creation isn't happening at a specific point, and it's not selected. What happens is if you take two identical twins, and they've now discovered this, after 20 and 30 years of different exposure and different diet and lifestyle, their genetics diverge. Now, we're not just talking about epigenetics, we're talking about actual genetics. So what happens is, if you have someone who has a bad lifestyle, and they've been eating a lot of sugar, they're more likely to pass on the tendency to diabetes to the children and grandchildren. That's been proven. So <clears throat> what happens is that as you live right, as your tissues are mineralized, as you are, are good, having good exercise and good nutrients, you actually change your genetics during your life. You read from the right books, and you actually shut down chromosomes that are bad. And you create new genetic information, not only epigenetic in terms of structure, but actual genes. And so I believe that creation is continuous. It's, not, it's never stopped. When God says, I'm creating the universe, he's, literally it's a continuous process. It's not one that's stopping. So literally mankind a thousand or ten thousand years from now will change as a continuous product of literally the intelligent design, continuous recreation in each individual by the Most High God. Interesting, eh? He even said he would name each star, you know. So, I mean, just go against that. Uh, the the knowledge, the pre knowledge, the pre knowledge of what uh, we know today as science is already pre validated in the Bible. Which is why, of course, things like uh, smart meters and Wi-Fi networks and and scalar technology is so dangerous because it interferes with the song of your DNA. Uh, what people need to know is even intentions, thoughts. They have substance. When you think and curse on someone, you physically affect their bioenergetic body, which literally creates their structures. That's why things like voodoo and these other things actually work. That's why demonic hordes and powers literally are infesting your mind in hyperspace and literally can change your physical body and your health. Now, people think, well, that's not physics. Yes, it is. In fact, you can measure a lot of these changes in the body bioelectrically with things like microcurrent spectral analyzers that can measure picovolts. You can see the differences happening in people's tissues. You can look at bioplasmatic imaging devices now. They can actually see it well beyond just the curly in photography. So what I'm touching on here briefly, and it's a little bit beyond the 10%, it, without getting too technical, is that the Creator God is continuously involved in your recreation, not only as a physical person, but as a spiritual person. And your spirit DNA is changing as you conform yourself to the Most High God and His Spirit because you're becoming a new creature. When it says you're a new creature, we're not just kind of saying, oh yeah, you got a different attitude toward the Creator. No, no. You are physically and spiritually and structurally and genetically becoming a new creature. Oh, by the way, for those that don't have uh, the ability to go to Wikipedia, the core of the Whirlpool Galaxy, yeah. the spiral that's on the back of your head <laughs> that He designed inside your yeah. fingertips and your DNA and your laminin yeah. Yeah. is Jesus Christ crucified inside the core of a galaxy. Yeah, you see that cross actually in the, in the nucleus of the M51 indicating two dust rings around the black hole at the center of the nebula. But it says the cross like structure. Yeah. You can see a cross. You, see, it looks very, you can see it looks like a man on a cross. Yeah. Praise Jesus. Amazing. Amen. Amazing. Again, uh, the world is more amazing, more dramatic, more wonderful, more powerful than anything you can imagine. And our God, as Nebuchadnezzar had to say, is God. Back in a moment with Bob Ellerton, Turtletop Shelters and Preparedness. 